We found some awesome travel trailers with no dinettes, just plenty of floor space. Stick around, folks. You're going to want to check these out. Hey everybody, Mike from RV Blogger here in front of the camera and Susan's behind the camera. And today we're going to be taking a look at some awesome travel trailers that have no dinette. So if you want to find a way to maximize your floor space or use the dinette area in a multitude of ways, stick around. We found some awesome floor plans you're going to want to check out. Hey guys, if you've seen us before on our channel, welcome back. And if this is your first time seeing us, welcome aboard. Susan and I make tons of videos all about RVing and we invite you to subscribe to our channel and please don't forget to hit the notification bell when you do so you'll be notified every single week when Susan and I put out a brand new video. But without any further ado, let's get started on our reviews of small travel trailers with no dinette. This travel trailer is the Riverside RV Retro, model number 135. It has an unloaded vehicle weight of 2,640 pounds, a cargo carry capacity of 1,000 pounds for an overall gross vehicle weight rating of 3,640 pounds. The hitch weight is just 140 pounds. It measures in at 15 feet 9 inches long, and it can sleep up to three people. When you first walk into this travel trailer, you'll notice on the right hand side is where your refrigerator is located and on the left is where the bathroom is located. But let's start all the way at the front of this travel trailer and then we'll work our way out. Now I'm sitting up here on the owner's bed currently and let's get a good measurement of this mattress here. It is 60 inches wide and oh, 76 inches long. So this would be considered a short queen size bed here. Uh, a full queen bed, a full length queen bed would be 80 inches long. Now up above your bed here, you'll notice you've got all these nice cabinetry up here with doors that close and stay in the closed position. So that's nice. It's not all open up top. So when you store your clothes in there, you can close your cabinet doors and hide everything away away on the right hand side here we have a wardrobe cabinet with a bar at the top so you can hang any items that you have and then on this end of the bed back behind the wardrobe cabinet is a little cubby area there is a receptacle back here there's also some uh, USB plugs back here so you can stay plugged in overnight while you're sleeping and then also at the head of the bed there's sort of like a nightstand or a table so you can place things here like you know, books, your phones, whatever you have. You could even put a CPAP machine here if you needed to. One more nice feature at the end of the bed is where the emergency window is located. Now, we've had a lot of questions come up lately from people wondering, like, how do you get out your emergency window? Some emergency windows, there's nothing in front of it. And so you'd have to kind of be able to step up three feet or four feet in the air to get to your emergency window and then uh, climb on out of here. But this one's in a great location because you can get on your bed. You always go out feet first, stomach down. That way when you're sliding out of your emergency window, your feet are down and you, they will hit the ground before your, before your head. So that's the way to use your, your emergency window and get out of here. Now the kitchen area in here is located right next to the bed. And up top here, you've got a pretty good size cabinet in here for your storage needs. All of this stuff is like solid wood. So these are really nice cabinets that are built in here. Next to that, you have a microwave oven, which is a good size for this size camper. Below that, we have our range hood and we have a two burner propane stove top here, plus a small kitchen sink. And then below that, you've got a couple of drawers for storage for your kitchen utensils, and then a little bit more storage underneath of your kitchen sink. So just across from the kitchen area is where the sofa is located. Now, this sofa can serve as a sofa, so you can relax in here a little bit, but it could also uh, serve as your dinette. Although there is no freestanding table, you can always buy a freestanding table and put it in here, and then you can sit inside and have your meals. Now, this sofa also has a third function, and that is that it jackknifes into another bed. And this bed, um, I think you could get Definitely one kid on here, maybe two smaller kids on here uh, comfortably. This one is about, call it 57 inches by like 43 inches. So uh, I don't even know how to categorize it, but you could get two small kids on here and maybe one larger kid on here. Now also underneath of here, there is a little bit of storage that you have access to underneath of the jackknife sofa. So it's always good to have all the storage space that you can. 
Now, uh, above that, we have a nice big window area here. And then above that, we have two really large cabinets for even more storage. And then, of course, your radio controls are here as well. Now, just across from where the jackknife sofa is located is where your TV location is in here. It's got a receptacle and a cable rough in. And then this is where you can mount your TV backer or mount on the wall. And then you can pull that out and see it from either your bed or from the sofa slash dinette area. Um, so that's a great spot for it. All of your other coach controls are right here as well. So they're in a very convenient location. And then finally, towards the back of the camper, you have your 12 volt refrigerator here on the right hand side. Really nice size fridge, great size freezer as well. So you'll be able to keep all your cold items and plenty of them nice and ready to go for the weekend. And then finally, we have our bathroom in here, and we'll take a look at that right now. Now, here I am inside the shower in the bathroom, and this is a decent sized bathroom for a really small travel trailer. Now, as you guys know, I'm 5'11", standing in here, and if I measure all the way up into the skylight, though, you have about six feet five inches of height in here so for you taller guys that should work out pretty well taller guys and gals and then your overall ceiling height throughout the entire camper is about six feet six inches tall so um, like i said decent size headroom in here for you taller folks there's also a power fan uh, in the bathroom here which is a really nice feature and then also back in the shower you've, you know you've got your shower head you've got three little corner shelves built into here. Uh, the surround itself is all plastic, but it's a nice design and it feels good in here. And then finally, you've got your shower curtain. Now, you guys know I hate shower curtains. It would be very easy to install a retractable shower door in here that would save you space and also keep this curtain from blowing in on you. Although they did a nice job with it because it is kind of goes with the retro theme, so it feels like it belongs in here, that's for sure. And then finally, we have our commode area. And in this camper, there is no sink in the bathroom to wash your hands, which has also been a fierce debate in our Facebook group and, and all of our YouTube comments. Do you really need a, a, a sink in your bathroom to wash your hands or can you use the kitchen sink for it? Or can you keep you know, some hand sanitizer in the bathroom and use that instead? I don't know. Let us know what you think in the comments down below. But here I am sitting on the commode in here with the door closed. It does feel a little claustrophobic because the door would be right here. But as far as the elbow test goes, no room on that side, but plenty of room on my left. Now outside this camper, it also has pass through storage that you can access from both sides. And there's even an outdoor shower. This travel trailer is the Forest River Geo Pro model number G15FBS. It has an unloaded vehicle weight of 3,435 pounds, cargo carry capacity of 1,063 pounds, for an overall gross vehicle weight rating of 4,498 pounds. The hitch weight is 498 pounds. It measures in at 17 feet 5 inches long, and it can sleep up to two people. When you first walk into this travel trailer on the right hand side, you'll find your sofa, dinette and Murphy bed. And then as you wrap on around in through here, you'll have your kitchen towards the front as well as your bathroom. Now, our first impression of this travel trailer when we walked in is that man, there's a lot of room in here for a compact travel trailer. This thing's 17 and a half feet long, but it's got everything that you need. And one of the biggest reasons for that is because of the multi uses that we're getting out of the front of this camper. And I'll show you what all of those are right now. Now, you can sit here on this nice comfy couch and use this to recline, relax, watch TV, which is in a perfect placement directly across from me. And it even does have a sort of recline. It doesn't recline all the way back, but it does have a little leg rest here so you can, you know, kick back, relax, and watch some TV. Now, its second use, of course, would be the dinette table. So two people can sit here. I guess we could talk about, you know, who's going to get most of the table and who's going to get a little bit of the table, but we would figure that out eventually. Susan would win. But anyway, uh, you can use this as your dinette table as well. And you could even use it as a little workstation if you had to get some work done or maybe a little trip planning done for your next destination. And then finally, you can take all this dinette out of here and this converts into a Murphy bed and I'll pull all this apart and show you how that works. So once you remove the dinette table and it just unscrews from this little bracket right here, you lift it straight up, easy as can be. Just grab this little loop and pull it out and then this 
jackknifes right down. It's really a great setup. And then it has two D rings up here. You just loosen those up and then you pull this down and you make sure that this bottom piece pulls out and watch your fingers. They don't get pinched in here. That's a bad pinch spot. And then you lower this on down. Boom. And there is your Murphy bed setup. Now, one nice thing they do is include these couple of straps that hold all of your sheets and comforter in place while your bed is in the upright position. Very, very nice feature. Also, well, before we talk about the rest, let's just get a measurement real quick. Let's see how big this mattress is. And it's a no-fold mattress. And it is a no-fold mattress, which is great on a Murphy bed. Good point, honey. So this thing is 74 inches by, I'm gonna say about 54 inches. So it is a short, full-size bed, but a decent one for two people. I mean, in a small trailer like this, you're not gonna get a king-size bed in here. So, but you know, at least it's all one mattress instead of those Murphy mattresses that have the fold, that you have to fold the mattress and have to put it away. So very nice, comfy setup in that regard. Now on each side of the bed, there is a wardrobe cabinet and you can hang garments from the top. Then below that, you have a nice end table here. There's also a receptacle on each of the two sidebars. So you can put a, you know, a CPAP machine, you can plug in and charge up any devices that you have. There's even a USB port on the other side of the bed over there. And then finally, this has a front window. We have the shade down right now, but you know, it's there if you wanna let some light in here too. Now to put the bed back up, you just simply lift it back into position. But this is the first time I've ever seen this. There's a little safety mechanism here on the front of the bed. You have to pull this knob to release it so that you can put it back up into position. So, you know, you're gonna kind of be on the side of the bed instead of the middle. Again, you have to watch your fingers because if this thing slams on the bottom of the bed, it, it'll get you. And then you just put that back up in place and set your D-rings in place to hold it steady and then you can put your couch back in position so there you go now as i mentioned when i was sitting on the couch the tv is in the perfect spot because it's right across from the couch and it's a good size tv and i like the fact that they have you know this nice cabinetry built in around the tv it looks like the tv is supposed to be here instead of just sort of hanging on a wall now down below that you have this nice countertop space here there is a receptacle on top here so I don't know, if you wanted to plug in a coffee machine, make it a coffee bar, you could do that or whatever you need. At least you have some electricity there. Then down below, you have these nice drawers that pull out for additional storage. All right, so as we wrap on around in here, we're gonna get into the kitchen area now. And the first thing you'll note is this large, what could be a pantry cabinet, but it could also be a coat hang or wardrobe cabinet. There is a bar up top, so you can remove these shelves and hang some garments there and then still have additional storage down below. Next to that, we have our Magic Chef refrigerator. It's got a nice, decent size freezer, separate freezer from the refrigerator, always a good thing. This is all 12 volts, so it runs off of the coach battery. Now, as we work our way around, we have a really big cooktop in here. I mean, for a little camper like this, this is a huge cooktop. A lot of bigger campers really only have two burners. This one has three. So if you're, a, if you're a small camper with a big appetite, maybe this is the one for you, I don't know. But anyway, you got three burners here, and then down below that, you have a convection microwave oven. A Couple other nice features around this cooktop are that there is a window over top of it just to get some extra light in here. And there's also a receptacle here. So if you're not cooking on your cooktop, but you wanna put I don't know, a toaster or a blender, a crock pot or something on top, you can plug it in right here. So that's a great feature. Now, as we wrap on around, there's a little uh, bottle opener here on the bottom of underneath the countertop. I always like those, you know, crack open a bottle of beer. And then you have your kitchen sink area and countertop area. There's also a tower of power here, so you can plug in your kitchen appliances over here as well. And then the kitchen sink itself is a decent size. It's a nice big square kitchen sink with an overhead faucet. Now this is a balloon hanging on here and that's because all these units are winterized and when they ship them when they're winterized they don't want that antifreeze to you know leak out the pink non-toxic antifreeze that they winterize with so they put balloons on here to catch any little water that might drip out so you might see those while we're doing some of our tours today. Down below your kitchen countertop 
we have additional storage underneath of the sink and they don't really have a utility um, drawer so they just put one of these in here for all your kitchen utensils and then next to that you have even more space for stowing things away and then finally there's a window over top of the kitchen sink which is always a nice feature to have that natural light coming in and then there's even a little more open storage up top with some cargo netting to hold things in place so here I am in the bathroom, and it's a good size bathroom for a really compact travel trailer. So great size in here, lots of room. Now I'm standing in the shower like I usually do. And as you guys know, I'm 5'11", and man, I've got about an inch over my head to hit the top of this skylight. So there's about six feet of headroom inside the shower. Now the rest of the RV has an arched roof, so it's shorter towards the side walls and taller in the middle. but your ceiling height towards the center of the RV is about six feet, six inches tall. So just to give you an idea how that headspace would work out. Now inside the shower, you know, it's got a removable shower wand. There's three little uh, corner shelves here for your soap and shampoo bottles. They also put in one of these nice little mesh storage bins. So you could put your, you know, some of your shaving stuff in there, maybe just get some stuff out of the way and store it there. And then they have a shower curtain in here which you guys know I'm not a big fan of the shower curtain. I much prefer to see a retractable shower door. Uh, that way it, you don't have a shower curtain blowing in on you and sticking to you when you're taking a shower. But I wouldn't pass up this model just because of that. I would just go and buy my own retractable shower door and install it myself. It's a piece of cake. Anyway, uh, one other thing to note is, and this is really unusual, but I don't see more than two people staying in here and yet they have a bathtub which I could see you throwing a little kid in here, but I don't know that you would have three people or four people in here, you know, two adults and a kid or two. There's just one bed. So maybe this is for your dog to take a bath. I'm not really sure. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. I'd love to know what you think. Now, outside of the shower, you've got this mirrored medicine cabinet here and a couple uh, or three shelves inside. So plenty of storage there. I love the vanity sink and countertop setup. There's just tons of room on top here for all your stuff that you keep in the bathroom. There's even a receptacle up top if you need to plug in a blow dryer or a curling iron or a shaver. And then of course we have some open storage under here with cargo netting to hold things in place. And finally, this little cabinet is very, very shallow. But I'll tell you a secret. You could keep your toilet chemical down there. Now, not just any toilet chemical because most toilet chemical bottles are big and round try Matt's Liquify. Those bottles will fit down there no problem and I guarantee you'll love his toilet chemical. So here I am sitting on the commode and you might notice above me is another shelf with some cargo netting to hold things in place. There's even a little towel ring over here but sitting on the commode in here I'm not going to necessarily pass the elbow test but even with the door in the closed position there's enough room in here that it actually feels very comfortable. And at the front of this travel trailer, there is pass-through storage. And just in front of the pass-through storage, on each side of this camper, there's also a little small storage area as well. This travel trailer is the Jayco J Feather model number 19 MRK. It has an unloaded vehicle weight of 4,775 pounds, a cargo carry capacity of 1,475 pounds for an overall gross vehicle weight rating of 6,250 pounds. The hitch weight is 485 pounds, it measures in at 24 feet long, and it can sleep up to four people. When you first walk into this travel trailer, on the right hand side you have your sofa and Murphy bed area. Then it wraps on around into the living and kitchen area, and towards the back of this camper is where the refrigerator and the bathroom are located. Now our first impression in this camper was, wow, there's a lot of floor space in here. I mean, this thing's less than 25 feet long but you've got an immense amount of floor space in here. It feels nice and big. And the reason for that is two things. Number one, we have a Murphy bed here towards the front of this camper. And number two, there's no dinette taking up a bunch of space in here either. So we've got these multifunctional areas in here that we can use to help create all this great floor space that you see. Now, towards the front of the camper is where the Murphy bed's located. In front of that though, you have your nice comfy couch right here. And you know, it is a pretty comfy couch. Underneath of it, there are a couple of drawers that open up and you've got additional storage under here. And then when it's time to go to bed at night, you just take your sofa and jackknife it out. Just pull this one pin and then lower everything down. 
Now on a Murphy bed setup like this, the mattress has to have a fold in it and it's in the top third of the mattress, which means when you're sleeping, you're really, you could really feel that, that seam in the mattress. And so what Susan and I would do if we were sleeping in here, we would pull the mattress, flip it around and put it back in place so that we're sleeping on the two thirds of the mattress that does not have the fold and the bottom third is down below our waist so it, does, it won't bother us that way. And then when it's time to pack up and leave, you gotta flip the mattress around so you can put it away properly. Now on both sides of the bed, you'll notice that there's a reading light in place and on the other side, there's one as well. It's a little hard to see. We're in a brand new camper and they've got the comforter all folded up there, but you do have a reading light on each side and there's also a cubby hole on each side as well with receptacle and USB ports there so you can plug in your phone tablet, computer, Kindles, whatever you happen to have uh, before you go to bed at night. Now on each side of the bed, there is a mirrored wardrobe cabinet and it's got a removable shelf in here so you can hang your garments or you can leave the shelf in and just use it for storage that way as well. There's also a little nightstand here in front of each of the wardrobe cabinets and just below each wardrobe stand, there's also a receptacle, USB and a C port for you there as well. While we have the bed down, let's get a quick measurement and see how big it is. This is uh, about 72 inches by 60 inches. So it would definitely be considered a short queen size bed. So here I am sitting in the movie theater style seating and uh, you'll notice it's got these really cool little, you know, tray tables that fit in. And what they do is they just have a little plastic piece on the bottom and it fits right into your cup holder over here. So it's a great design. I mean, it just sits in right in there and slides back and forth. Now, for those of you that don't like these table trays, you do have another option here. And that is that there is a dinette table that goes underneath of the couch area. It stows away there. It's perfect. You can pull it out, set it up in front of your movie theater style seating and have a whole table here. You can uh, enjoy your dinner and the TV is straight across from here. So it's in a perfect location. A couple other nice features over here are you've got a couple lights overhead to light you up if you want to read a book or something like that. You've got three windows here, one on each side and one behind us to get a nice cross breeze. We don't have any power in these units because we're out here in the middle of the RV show and they haven't turned on the power yet. So we are enjoying the cross breeze. Trust me, it's hot out here today. Uh, another nice feature is in the center console here. It's a nice deep spot. You can put all of your remotes and everything in here so you don't lose them. And then on the one side, you have an end table, which is very nice. That actually lifts up with additional storage under there. And then there are also electrical receptacles and USB ports on both sides for your convenience. Now the kitchen area in here is really great because it just has tons of countertop space. Look at this, it's amazing. For a camper under 25 feet, I don't know. This is probably some of the most countertop space we've ever seen, that's for sure. Now, starting up top here, this is where your TV is located. It's in a great location. You can see it from your seats right across from it, or you can pull it out and swing it around so you can see it from the sofa or while you're laying in bed at night. So perfect spot for that. And right next door to that, we have a microwave oven that's built in. And then finally back here, it's like one big corner cabinet. All these doors open up, but it's just one big giant cabinet that you can access from three different doors. So lots and lots of space up there. Now back here is tons of countertop space as well. There's a tower of power back here. There's a light above. You could put a crock pot, air fryer, coffee maker, toaster, whatever you want to use back here. And it's just nice and out of the way. So it's a really good setup. You've got this huge window over top of the kitchen sink, which I really, really love. And then you have a nice white double bowl kitchen sink with the divider being a little lower than normal, which I think is a very convenient feature for a sink of this style. It also has a nice gooseneck faucet overhead. And while I'm talking about this a little bit, one nice feature to point out is the backsplash that's in here too. It really just sets it apart. It's a stick and peel style backsplash, which just means it's like wallpaper. Um, and by the way, if you wanna dress up your trailer a little bit because it doesn't have a backsplash like this, you can buy stick and peel tiles very cheap off of Amazon. In fact, we wrote a whole article about it on rvblogger.com if you wanna go over there and check out how to decorate your camper. But anyway, back to this one. It's also got a three burner stove up top 
and then down below you have a real oven so if you want to pop a pizza in there you are in great shape just next to that we have this immense amount of countertop space another tower of power here and also a window above that and if you need more storage you have plenty of it i mean we've got tons of storage under the countertop i have a nice big drawer here for all your pots and pans storage three nice sized drawers here for all of your kitchen utensils and then even more storage under the kitchen sink here I am by the refrigerator back here. And as you can see, it's got a nice big freezer separate from the refrigerator. Good size fridge for this size travel trailer. This is a 12 volt refrigerator, which we're seeing in virtually every camper these days. I think the, the old uh, propane fridges are gonna be long, long gone pretty soon. So here I am in the back bathroom and I'm standing in the shower like I usually am. Now you guys know I'm 5'11 by now, if you've seen our videos before anyway. And so here I am in the shower and the amount of space from the shower floor to the skylight is six feet, five inches. And the headspace in the entire camper, let's see what that is. Oh, that's about six feet, six inches tall. So, you know, for you taller folks, you know, you'll be able to fit in here pretty well, I think. Now, this is a very nice shower for a couple of reasons. The first thing I noticed when I stepped in here is that it's wider than most showers that we see by about three or four inches. So it gives me a really nice feeling that I have plenty of room in here to move around. Back behind me here, there are three corner shelves for all your soap and shampoo. And then instead of a shower curtain, they sort of have a built-in curtain on a track. And the track itself actually goes out into the bathroom, so it even creates a little more elbow space when you're inside the shower. Now, just outside of the shower is where the medicine cabinet's located, and it's a good size medicine cabinet. It, this top door does sort of pop into the shower track just a little bit, but you still have full access to that medicine cabinet. Down below that, we have a really great vanity. That's a super big sink for a vanity sink in a trailer. Plus you have some additional countertop space, a little towel ring, and then there's a receptacle just below the countertop so you can plug in a hair dryer, curling iron, shaver, whatever you need. And then additional storage is located below the sink. There's also a ton of linen cabinet storage here because this is all open storage. You can use this for your linen cabinet. You can use it to store extra TP, you know, put your toilet chemicals up there, whatever you need. But it's a lot of storage space inside of this bathroom. Now, here I am sitting on the commode and Susan is standing in the shower now. And as you can see, it's a little bit of a tight fit in here. I mean, I can't do the elbow test, but, you know, the bathroom is big enough that it doesn't really feel claustrophobic in here at all. And finally, at the very front of this camper, you have open pass-through storage from side to side. Let us know in the comments down below which one of these travel trailers with no dinettes you like the most and why, so we can all learn from each other about what features we really enjoy and what we would like to see improved a little bit in these RVs as well. And if you'd like to check out some more RVs with no dinette included, just click the box down below, and Susan and I will see you in the next video.